Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome back to the first brand new addition to the Advanced Guide series. Today, I shall be covering the brand new Viper, which is quickly becoming my new favorite melee role, a class which has taken inspiration from warriors, samurais, monks, and more, which combinate in high mobility, amazing burst damage, and even has stalling potential. Stay tuned as I cover the skills and combos, strengths and weaknesses, and go into strategies with gameplay. Thank you all for the continued support. Let me know down below how you yourself are finding the Viper. Enjoy the video and without further ado, let's begin. Let's begin with your job actions and their combos. Your basic rotation is the six-part Steel Fangs rotation, starting with the Steel Fangs into Hunter's Sting. Hunter's Sting will then increase your damage by 10%, for 15 seconds up to a maximum of 30 seconds. This then leads into your Barbarous Bite, followed by your Piercing Fangs. Next is the Swift Skin Sting, which will now reduce your weapon skill recast time by 20%, for 15 seconds up to a maximum of 30, with the last part of this rotation being the Ravenous Bite. You won't be using the main combo all that often, outside of your other abilities. However, it is nice to have at the ready, in order to maintain Viper's damage boost and recast boost. For your gap closer, we have Sliver. This works just the same as the Monk. You can dash to both enemies and allies. Following this dash, your next weapon action will become 25% stronger. You will typically use this as part of your main engage, as your main opener is the Hunter's Snap. This applies the same damage boost for 15 seconds, which then combos in to the Twin Fang Bite. This will also grant you 3 seconds of charge towards your limit break. Repeat this process once more, only this time the Hunter's Snap has become the Swift Skin Coil. This one grants 15 seconds of faster cooldowns, and this time combos into the Twin Blood Bite, once again taking 3 seconds off your limit break charge. This opener alone will take 6 seconds off your limit break charge, and sets up your damage boost and faster cooldowns. Next we have the Serpent's Tail. This action will take the form of all other instant cast abilities. For example, in the main rotation, actions 3 and 6 transform the Serpent's Tail into Death's Rattle, which, just like the Hunter Snap combos, takes 3 seconds off your limit break charge time, granting you 6 seconds with a full rotation. For your ranged attack, we have the Uncoiled Fury. This can be cast from 20 yards away, dealing 8,000 to your target and those around him. Should this only strike a single target, you will deal a bonus 50% for 12,000 damage. This combos into the Uncoiled Twin Fang, and just like before, will remove 3 seconds of your limit break charge time. Next up we have the Snake Scales, a rather cheeky ability. Upon activation, be warned, you will be held in place. While active, all damage you receive is reduced by 50%, and just like a warrior's limit break, no crowd control will work against you. You are then granted a 6,000 barrier. Once this barrier is completely absorbed, you gain the effect of Snake's Bane. From waiting out the 4 second timer, or by manual activation. You will then attack with Backlash. Backlash deals 6,000 to all around you. 50% of that damage you deal will become HP. This 50% is then doubled for targets within a 5 yard radius, allowing Viper to not only tank, but self-sustain very well in select scenarios. Both your Snake Scales and Uncoiled Fury can be instantly reset with the action Rattling Coil. Now for your Limit Break. The activation is very similar to that of the Samurai. Upon activation, you will dive your target, dealing 10,000 to that target and all players nearby. This will then trigger your reawakened state, which now alters the Dual Fang rotation and Serpent Tail abilities. You will deal 20% more damage to your target, as well as striking them with heavy. This limit break is wonderful to time with a Dark Knight, as it is all AoE damage. Now while in your reawakened state, your Dual Fang combo turns into a 4-part generation combo, and with each activation of a generation skill, the Serpent's Tails becomes the 4-part Legacy combo. You will jump back and forth between a Generation skill and a Legacy skill, dealing 5,000 to 3,000 to 5,000 to 3,000 and so on. Your Limit Break combo then ends off with Ouroboros, landing one final 10,000 to all enemies around your target. You can also trigger Ouroboros at any stage during your Limit Break, in order to end your Limit Break early, or for situations you want to finish off a player right then and there. To put Viper simply, you are not changing what combo you are doing halfway through. As the Viper, you are aiming to complete full combos, in order to keep your bonus damage and recast timers going. Doing so will also earn you fast limit breaks, making you the perfect partner role to follow up on others' limit breaks. For 
Viper strategies, the first thing I have learnt about the Viper is that you can make bold plays. Excellent, as we have a Dark Knight going in as a commander. This is perfect as a Viper, as the role is not the best at being the battle initiator. Instead, I begin by backing up my Dark Knight with Uncoiled Fury, right as he goes in, then using Sliver to close the gap. I pop Hunter Snap solely for that 10% damage increase, and with all eyes on my tank, I am free to attempt a Snake Scales. I only hold for 2 seconds as I just wanted to provide pressure and to not hang around long enough to get swarmed. I fall back to cover while three of the Immortals give chase, and thanks to Rattling Core's ability to reset my Snake Scales, you can easily tank all three with no cost to your MP reserves. No kills on the board yet, however thanks to how the Viper works, my Limit Break is just about to come online, right as my Dark Knight goes in for a Salted Earth. The setup could not have been better, and this Limit Break will soon become one of the best in PvP. Look at the range of this reach, hitting almost every immortal here. This means in aggressive teams with huge team wipes, you as the Viper will build level 5 battle highs, just from assists alone. The two key elements to balance is 1. To not overcommit to any one play, and 2. Beware of your team's locations, as you can use Sliver at any time to escape to allies. Getting caught off guard like myself in this situation, you have enough mobility to make an escape. However, far too much crowd control was my undoing, but you can still make for a great distraction with your snake scales. While everyone is busy killing you, your team can flee, so do not be afraid to stall out the enemy team in situations you will not be able to escape. Upon my return, I arrive just in time to limit break combo off with my Dark Knight once more, this time to a much greater effect, causing many of the Maelstrom to back off and flee. Sadly, PvP right now is filled with XP farmers, turning this limit break into little more than a scare tactic. This sums up that while the limit break is strong, it does not have the same solo carry potential as others, leaving me to stall while my team lick the big shiny rock. Jumping ahead from the large crystal, a small group and myself were able to push back, picking off a few along the way. And with my Dark Knight once more setting up the perfect limit break, while this does result in a few kills for the team, this does come to show that Viper can suffer in a similar manner to the Reaper. When stuck with less aggressive teams who only fixate on objectives, the Viper can really struggle to claim a kill for itself. Moving on ahead to an ambush at the choke point, this play shows that for frontline alone, Viper is currently excellent for taking down ranged rolls. However, the resistances of both tanks and melee really dampen down your damage. Meaning with the current version of Viper, your best play is to ensure you hit as many players as possible. You need to claim every assist that you can in order to build that battle high. But like I previously mentioned, with a coordinated team willing to take fights, the value Vipers bring will begin to shine through. Returning to my team, a small team fight has finally broken out. Here I am holding off to the side, waiting for a small gripe in order to maximize my limit break potential. This level 5 battle high white mage struggles to keep up with the constant onslaught of damage, with his bard and his paladin not far behind. Small battles such as this as a solo player worked really well as you are able to combo off, and now the maelstrom have come to play. I fall back to the objective with the team, falling back more than I normally would, based off my team's unwillingness in previous battles, and the fact that while you can survive with snake scales, if your team are retreating you yourself have no target to dash to. So now I change my playstyle, dashing in for some fast damage and then backing off. Wait for the next opening to occur and then dive back in. This was working to great effect. It seems the Viper will be a valuable role when it comes to finishing off players, in those situations where they can escape with a crumb of health. Jumping into the fight late also allowed for the use of snake scales to be used as damage rather than defense, with the enemy's attention already set upon your team. Onto one final battle. The Immortals are pushing in with the Maelstrom on their flank. I wanted to now test the limit break potential when their focus is divided. The opening burst damage with the incoming damage from those nearby worked wonders, dropping this machinist before he could even react. Once PvP settles down on the EXP farming, and more players returning to enjoy PvP, do not be surprised when you see Q-Sync groups running Vipers and Dark Knights. Even in this situation where I pushed aggressively for those final moments, falling back and using snake scales when I knew crowd control was coming my way, allowed me to survive where other melee rolls would not. At this point, it was a simple matter of retreat, heal up and pick off those players one by one, and the results are still surprising. Considering how many played this round, and the learning curve, with 4 deaths on the board, I was still able to come out with 8 kills and 1.4 million damage. So with time and practice, and an average match to a solid match, there is no reason why Vipers won't be hitting 10 to 20 kills, and anywhere between 2 to 3 million damage.
for your strengths, firstly you have great mobility, a dash in which can hold free charges just like the monk. This can be used to dive onto targets and allies. You have a rather interesting self-sustain. Snake scales is clutch in many situations, and I found it works wonders when there are many ranged players focusing you, allowing you to dampen the damage from their burst rotations before escaping. You can increase both your damage and your recast timers, with every rotation having a way of increasing and maintaining those timers. Your limit break is much more powerful than it may seem. It is designed to work around team play. If you follow up Dark Knights and Dragoons going in, with how this limit break works dashing you in with a large AoE, the opportunity is there to steal a large amount of kills. Your limit break lasts quite a while, meaning you do not need to burn through it all within the first few seconds. And do not forget your combos increase how often you earn your limit break, meaning you should not be afraid to use them. Whether the play works out or fails, you will have another limit break ready in no time. And right now, in frontline, the Viper's damage feels quite good against ranged rolls. You either claim the kill or you force them out. For your weaknesses, well firstly you can treat this role just like a Reaper. The less aggressive your team, the harder it can be to make big plays. Your defensive skill Snake Scales is a fun gimmick to use. However, mistimings or using it in the wrong location can very easily get you killed. Being almost all close quarter combat, it can be a struggle to get in close long enough to get through your rotations. In order to keep the uptime on your damage and recast timers, Frontline resistances right now can really dampen your damage against other melee and tank rolls. The job is also the most technical of all melee rolls to date, so do not get frustrated when learning this role. It will take time to master. And there we have it. Everything you need to know for picking up the Viper in PvP right now. It is fast-paced, and the technical element is a rather refreshing feel. If you are looking for a PvP role which will challenge you a bit more, I hope today's video can be of some help. Thank you all for watching, and check back soon for my Pictomancer Advanced Guide. Until then, happy hunting, and I shall see you all in the next one.